What's going on everybody? This is Eric here from Paraflinch. Welcome back to another video of ours. Today I've got a League Cup for you that I hosted over in the Portland, Oregon area um, at the one and only Paraflinch League. And uh, I've got Top Cut for you right here, right now. Um, I was going to do all of the Swiss rounds, however, there was a couple uh, big problems in the uh, early early the first Swiss round I should say so I kind of just cut all of them just because of that it'd be kind of weird just to go into round two um, so we're just gonna go right into top cut there'll be three videos for you from this league cup and I thought that'd be better anyways so on the left we've got a buzz shrine uh, Garbodor deck and on the right we have a uh, Zoro rock deck I believe so um, the buzz shrine player goes first gets down uh, two nest balls i believe um gets another trubbish and a pseudo wudo uh, which is really good for them so they can stop their uh, opponent from doing any zorark shenanigans and um not a very strong start for the uh zorark player as they just have to go for an n here um yeah you want to get your turn one bridget and unfortunately he just it could not get that so let's see so he does evolve into um, his Lycanroc. So he must have gone um, first and he just passed. So uh, luckily the end uh, did pay off there uh, to get him some more Pokemon. And he's going to Tapu Lele for a Sycamore uh, just in case uh, the the Buzz Shrine player is playing uh, Garbodor, um, the Garbotoxin one. This is expanded, by the way. This is expanded League Cup because we have our expanded regionals coming up very shortly. Um, so going on to the Buzz Shrine player, he puts down a Shrine. You know, I'm just going to start calling them by their names, um, because I know these players. The, the, the Shrine player is Dylan, and on the right, uh, Kier is rocking the, uh, the Zora Rock, uh, deck. So, yep, so it looks like, uh, Dylan is going to, uh, get his Garbodor Trash Lanch out, and he's going to bump that DCE off of Lycanroc, which is really going to hurt here. here. Um, and let's see. He's got a huge hand now off, off the Sycamore. It drops down another Baby Buzz. Drops down an energy onto the Garbodor. And looks like he is just going to pass with 10 damage going onto that Lycanroc from the Shrine. So let's see what Kier can do. The time is ticking here. Puts down another DCE. And it uh, looks like he is going to... Uh, what, what did he just discard there? It looks like he Ultra Balled two tools away to get his own Garbodor... Or get his own um, Pseudo Wudo out. I can't really... I didn't quite really see that. Sorry, guys. Uh, the playback's a little weird on um, this po these post recordings. Uh, just because they jump a little bit. Just because of uh, the video. It just... It's also probably because I have a really crappy computer, but hey -o, whatever. Um, I do need to get a new computer here pretty soon. Um, but anyways, it looks like here's Tapu Lele for a Cynthia. And um, looks like, let's see what he gets from his hand here. Did get, I probably would have maybe considered attaching, um, actually I'm not sure if Kier plays any basic strong energy because I was gonna say maybe just holding out and waiting to see what you get off the Cynthia to, to maybe attach a basic fighting so, um, so Dylan can't knock it off with another enhanced hammer, but uh, looks like that's all he's got, and he's gonna pass it on over to Dylan here. Let's see. Um, looks like he colrist for looks like seven cards. Yeah, for seven seven cards. There's seven Pokemon on the bench. Um, let's see. Uh, the damage is racking up from that shrine, but uh, luckily Kier did get down the Sky Field, uh, which is nice. Um, going on to Kier's turn, looks like, um, Dylan can't get the pseudo Wudo out of the active, so. Now Kier's got a strong energy and a DCE on that Lycanroc, so he can now start taking prizes, which is really important. You really need to start taking prize after prize after prize, since you are trading two prize attackers, uh, with, uh, Dylan's one prize attacker. So he does knock out the pseudo Wudo, which is a really good knockout to take, um, considering... You are uh, a, a Zorark deck with Skyfield, so uh, really important here. If Dylan wants to uh, limit Kier's bench again, he'll have to dig for one of his rescue stretchers, which I think he plays like two of. Um, so maybe even three, I can't really remember. I didn't check the deck list before the video. I wasn't prepared. I'm sorry, people. Please forgive me. 
Alright, going on to Kier's turn. Um, looks like Dylan put some pretty big damage onto that Lycanroc GX. So, uh, looks like Kier's going to Ultra Ball away a Zoroark and a Guzma. Um, let's see what he gets here. Looks like he's just uh, focusing on Lycanrocs at this point. He is not going to give his opponent any leeway with uh, Zoroarks, which is kind of strange since he did he does play weakness policy. Uh, we did see a weakness policy hit the discard pile, so um, there is chances for uh, for Zorark to be successful here, but uh, he's just not going to take the chance. Not going to take the chance. He's even going to put down a Baby Buzz and Chorus for nine cards, so that's pretty cool. That's a big nine cards there. Broken supporter we need back in standard. Maybe. That'd be nice. Standard has really bad uh, draw supporters. It does get a couple good ones with the Lost Thunder coming out with Sightseer. And um, I think that's really the only draw supporter that's worthy of noting. Um, let me know in the comments if there's any other draw supporters worthy of noting. I know uh, Professor Elm's coming out, which will be great for decks that want that Bridget back. I want my Bridget back. And looks like Kier's got um, seven Pokemon down on the bench here. It's a lot of Pokemon. He did let loose here, so uh, limiting Dylan's hand to four. But I don't think that matters. It looks like uh, he is on four prizes now, so that Sledgehammer will be taking the knockout most definitely. Um, with uh, it looks like he's got two Strongs on that Buzzwool, um, that Baby Buzz, and the Shrine. And then we see an N come down here. I apologize for the glare, guys. Um, I tried to dim it down a little bit with... Uh, excuse me. Sorry, I was about to uh, sneeze there. Um, I tried to dim down the lights a little bit uh, with my software, but what can you do? Um, it's just a situation. You'd rather have better lighting than uh, no lighting at all, right? So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a catch-22. Just have to deal with it. Uh, yeah, so looks like, uh, as expected, Dylan did take the knockout on that four prize sledgehammer turn on that beefy uh, Lycanroc. Um, so now it looks like Kier's got to see that we see the weakness policy again. So we know he plays two weakness policy. So he's going to get the Lycanroc here, gets the DCE down, which is great. So now he's going to claw slash, I can imagine. Yep, did not flip over the GX marker. He claw slashed. Uh, I wonder how many items are in the discard pile. If that counter over there is correct, it looks like there is uh, five items in the discard pile. Um, I would think there would be a lot more. I remember seeing at least two weakness policy, an ultra ball, and a choice fan go down. So I think there's more than just those five. But we will have to see. Because we got a, we got a Garbodor on Dylan's side uh, with a choice band. And I am sure that um, he'll be able to hit those numbers if uh wait five yeah he's hitting 130 if it is five but i i think there is a lot more in there that discard pile looks pretty beefy but we'll just have to wait and see if not uh dylan can just swing with baby buzz let's see what uh he's got here um looks like he guzma up a tapu lele and he's gonna count see how many items looks like that was enough for the knockout so it looks like there's seven, or maybe six. There's six. No, there, there's got to be seven. Yeah, I think that's a seven over there. 140, 150, 160, 170 with a choice. But that is two prizes. So now Kier cannot lose one more prize, or else Dylan will win game one of this best of three matchup uh, here to go on into the top four of the League Cup. Let's see what he can do. Uh, probably the best bet would be to just knock out this Garbodor, but you got another Garbodor right here, and this Shrine damage is ticking up. It is just ticking up bad. Um, so let's just see what happens here. He does slap down a Zorark. He's like, hey, if uh, he's going to knock me out, he's going to knock me out. But what what's a better time now, now that he's past the Sledgehammer turn, to start swinging a Zorark since you have resistance? Uh, makes sense. Um, let's see. Looks like he just ult or Rescue Stretchered for... Marshadow, and he's going to let loose both players into four cards. Probably would have rather seen an N. Um, it just gives him more outs. But uh, let's see if he's got any other plans in mind. Nope, just going to retreat. He's going to special charge two DCE back into the deck. And Kier is going to swing for 120 and probably knock it. Or not pro probably. Uh, most definitely will knock out this Garbodor with the choice band on there. But let's see what Dylan has. Uh, looks like he there was enough with the choice band. 
Um, since Rescue Stretcher was played, I think Ultra Ball was played. That was more than enough. I think there was uh, at least 10 in the discard pile with the choice band would have been um, enough, I believe. Or there has to be 11, right? Because of resistance. Yeah, 200. No, no, no. Uh, 10 should be enough with shrine damage. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going on to game two. Uh, Dylan won game one. Uh, let's see who can come out on top here if Dylan wins the next one. Of course, uh, since this is best of three, he will move on to the top four. Um, so let's go ahead and see. I didn't see their starts. I didn't see their opening hands. Um, so Dylan gets down his Oranguru and Trubbish, and Kier gets down a Rock Ruff. There's the turn one Bridget that he was missing from game one. Gets down another Rock Ruff, a Zorua, and maybe a Pseudo Wudo. That actually does uh, hurt um, Kier's bench, or not Kier's bench. Sorry, that does it does hurt Kier's bench, but it hurts um, Dylan's bench as well. Um, but nope, he's just gonna um, get down uh, another Rock Ruff, which is an A-OK -okay play. Uh, looks like he Ultra Balls a su that Pseudo Wudo away, I think. I think he Ultra Balls a Pseudo Wudo and an Acer Rollo away, which is nice because now it's always in the discard pile and the four versus Seekers he has can uh, scoop those damaged Pokemon up. It's very, it's a very good swing card in this matchup for sure. Uh, looks like Kier is going for another Zorua. I am A-OK -okay with that play. Get as many of your babies down as much as possible and a basic fighting energy to boot to attach to the rock rough so a very very strong play from Kier here uh very strong turn i should say and this is looking re looking really good for Kier. um looks like two nest balls were played so he's gonna get down a pseudo wudo and maybe um probably a baby buzz i would imagine maybe another trubbish yep gets down a baby buzz uh and he's gonna just end right there which is probably just a-okay for Kier. um getting six fresh new cards uh what can you ask for um let's see so what dylan wants to do um is he wants to get down a choice band or not a choice band he wants to get a float stone down throw up the baby buzz and start swinging into this rock rough um he does get the one of his shrines so he's going to start putting some damage onto that lele at the very least um, but it doesn't look like he got the float stone so he is just going to pass so Let's see what Kier can do here in his turn. Uh, he gets a parallel, which is great. Parallels um, Dylan's bench here. And he is just going to Guzma up um, that Oranguru, which is nice. That kills his draw support. And he's going to go for the surprise attack. And unfortunately, it, it's a Tails. He could have gotten the knockout on that Oranguru. Really cheeky knockout there, but it just did not pay off. Um, that would have done a total of 50... Uh, plus the 20 from the strong energy 70 140 uh, more than enough 20 damage more than enough to take the knockout on that Oranguru with weakness uh, but it just did not happen with the coin flip that surprise attack uh, was not very surprising as it were so now we're going to see a baby buzz come down and with a Diancie that will be the knockout on this uh, rock rough if he can get the float stone as well on Dylan's side uh, let's see what happens here um, looks like he missed that um, that float stone play that I was just talking about, and he, looks like here's a little scared here. He's gonna retreat. Um, his hand is pretty dead at this point, and unfortunately he had such a strong start, but his hand is just uh, complete garbage right now. And um, looks like Dylan did have the Guzma, but he does not have Diancy, so he's just gonna swing for 50. Um, hopefully he has something to get this rock rough out of here or else that's rock rough is just gonna go down Which is really sad. He was Kira was looking really good uh, Versus seeker. He does have ace roll in there. We do know that for excuse me for sure He could go for a Bridget since he does have a sky field up um, Let's see what he goes for I probably would rather see an ace roll and he does take the ace roll so he's gonna take um, This damage rock rough. Oh, no, he's I guess he's taking the uh the Colrus. Or wait, what is he? Why is he going in his deck? Oh, he put down Tabu Lele, I think. What was that? I guess he is. He's just going to go for Colrus. Um, I don't know what's going on here. I think I'm going to see a Colrus. Nope, just a pass. Oh, did he ace Arola? No, I, the damage counters are still on him. I'm, I'm kind of confused here. What happened? <laughs> he definitely versus Secret for something, but 
sorry guys, I don't know exactly what happened. I know he retreated um, into this clean rock rough with no energy on it, but um, if Dylan does have a Guzma, he's just going to be able to take out that rock rough, but it looks like he just sent the Ed for six. Uh, he is going to be able to enhance hammer that strong energy away, which is a really good play. Puts down a beast energy on the active, so now that uh, Buzzwell is hitting 70 damage without the Diancy. And this is looking really scary for Kira here. His hand, um, I know he does have the Colrus. Uh, looks like he had a special charge, I believe. Yep, special charge, uh, putting that st those the strong in. I think it was two strongs, actually. Two strongs back into the deck. And he's going to Colrus for seven cards. So hopefully he can hit something here. I mean, maybe a DC. Uh, actually, if he gets uh, seven Pokemon down on his on his board, he can hit 140 with a Zoroark, a DCE. Uh, though that is scary because you still have a Buzzwall on the bench with uh, Choice Band and Strong Energy. Looks like here's kind of trying to go that route, or at least trying to trade. He gets a Zoroark up with a Weakness Policy on it, which is good. Uh, has a DCE, so he still needs to get, uh, looks like, two more Pokemon. Nope, he just does not have it yet, so he's just going to swing for 100 damage. Um, so if Dylan does have a Field Blower here... This isn't looking good. It's not looking good for Kier. Um, he does have an Enhance Hammer in, in his hand, so he is going to Enhance Hammer. Um, or no, let's see. He Enhance Hammers something, didn't he? I can't remember. I can't, Or I can't see exactly. Did he Enhance Hammer? The DC is still there. I'm not entirely sure. I think, I think he played Sycamore just so he can dig for that Field Blower. It doesn't look like he hit it. Um, so he probably will just end up be swinging here for a lot of damage though a lot of damage um, Let's see what does he got in hand here? Uh, if he has a field blower he could conserve that beefy buzz wool um, Nope he attaches a rainbow energy to the active so let's see if he does swing around here He's doing 80 100 130 um, 140 with the shrine. Uh, yeah. I think he's just going to go for max damage here, um, which kind of sucks. Yeah, he's going to go for that swing around. I think that was double heads here. Um, if, if I saw that correctly, yeah, it looks like 180 going down onto that Zorark. So you breathe on that thing, it'll die next turn. Uh, Kier does have Acerola in the discard pile. It's worthy to note. Uh, so very easy Acer role play could happen. However, it uh, doesn't really hurt Dylan that much, right? He's only losing, losing one prize, though he does lose his beast energy, so maybe it is a good trade. Um, it might be the play. It looks like he... Was that a Guzma play that I just saw? Nope. Nope. He's, that was just him putting his discard back down. So he's going to play Computer Search, get rid of a Lele and a DCE. Holy cow, that is an expensive um, Computer Search there. Uh, for whatever one card he wants looks like it's going to be a sycamore so draw seven cards here wants to see probably i don't i really don't know to be quite honest with you um ultra balls away a mew ex and a rock rough maybe a lichen rock yep lichen rock and he's going to bloodthirsty eyes something up i can imagine he wants to take a prize here with his Zorark. Uh, Skyfield comes down. Nope, he doesn't bloodthirsty eyes. He's going to take the knockout on this baby buzz here. Yep, right is beating for the knockout. Clean up that buzz wool. And then uh, he's going to send up a fresh buzz wool. Puts a beast energy on it. And, um... Uh, no, he can't do that. Yeah, he can't put a rainbow down because he just put that beast energy on. Yep. And then he's just going to sledgehammer for the knockout. And like that, Dylan is down to three prizes, I believe. And Kier still needs to take five. So he needs to take five knockouts. He needs to basically clean up uh, Dylan's board here, uh, which can be done. Looks like uh, the dangerous rogue play is going to be happening here um, to knock out the baby buzz. But that makes uh, Dylan go on his sledgehammer turn. And he does have a strong and a choice band on that baby buzz which is, let's see, a total of 140, 150, 160, 170, um, 180 if he has a Shrine, and if he has a Diancy, he is going to hit 200 here. So let's see 
what he can do. Another strong would also bump it to 200. Uh, it looks like he does have a Rangaroo, but he has a Floatstone as well, so he can figure out what he wants to do here. Looks like he does have Strong in hand. If he has Diancy, he does get the knockout here um, with Shrine. Sorry. So there is the Diancy. Um, actually, does he need? He doesn't need uh, Shrine anymore because he can just get the knockout. So he'd be on one, 120, 140, 160, 180. Yeah, that is more than enough. That is 210 damage without Shrine, and he is going to get the knockout on this Lycanroc GX. Just like that, trying to punishment deck, so powerful. Just baby buzz in general, it's just so powerful. It's it's insane. Um, one prize attackers, man. Just can't beat him, join him. That's what it's looking like at this point. But uh, unless you run weakness policy, then you're fine. <laughs> no, um, yeah, this, what do they call it? Spas, spas, single prize attackers and with shrine. <laughs> so, Smartly enough, Dylan is getting down another Trubbish uh, because late game, that is what's going to take his prizes here with the Garbodors. He is going to be able to take this knockout on the Slycanroc. No, that should be enough, shouldn't it? That's four prizes, so he's hitting 120, 140, 160, 170, 80, 190, 200, 210. That should be the knockout on that Lycanroc. I don't know why um, it's not, unless he's he is on five prizes, but I think he's only on four. That should be enough. That's two strongs and a choice band. So 120, 140, 160, 170, 80, 190, 200, 210. I have no idea if this is an Acer roll of play. It is. That should have been a knockout. Um, I have no idea why that wasn't a knockout. Uh, I will have to talk to Dylan or Kier after this. Um, I'm pretty sure that should have been a knockout because that was two strong energy and Diancy and a choice band. So, I'm not sure what I'm missing here. 120, yeah, 120, 140, 70, 180. Yeah, that, that was definitely enough, man. Um, big ol' yikes for me, guys. I wasn't, I wasn't fo mainly focused on the stream match. I was walking around judging other matches as well, and I wasn't called uh, to this situation. So, big ol' yikes, guys. Sorry. Uh, looks like... Let's see what happens from here. Let's see if it e ends up mattering in the long run. Um, looks like Dylan uh, confidently puts up this Garbodor with a choice band. So maybe this is enough to take the knockout on a Zorark. Let's see. Uh, oh, there is 200. Okay, so I see the dice. There is 200 uh, damage worth of items. So there is <laughs> there is 10 items in the discard pile wow i can't i can't say that <laughs> at all so uh that is 200 230 um minus 20 210 damage to take the knockout on the zorark and then kira is going to end his opponent hopefully he can get out of this somehow um he i did he attach for turn yet maybe i don't think so i don't think he did attach for turn nope he did and that is just going to be the game uh you can see uh, Shrine of Punishment is such a strong deck, even in Expanded. Um, I will stick, stick around, guys. Uh, this week, maybe this week, or for sure next week, you will see our top four match. And it is going to be Shrine of Punishment versus, um, I believe it was uh, a Buzzwool Lycanroc deck. So, um, similar to Xander Perro's list that he took to win at Renoke uh, at the last Expanded Regional that we had here in the States. So... Uh, yep, please stick around and we'll see you guys next time. Please like and share the video if you did or if you did like the video That's greatly appreciated and until next time. We'll see you later